Hello, and welcome to Controllers Tech. If you are a subscriber to my channel, you might have already found out that soon I am going to start the Modbus RTU video series. I have also created a playlist for the same, and here are some videos for you to understand some basics about the Modbus standard. These videos are from some other creator, and it explains very well what the Modbus is, and why it was developed in the first place. If you are interested in Modbus, do check out these videos, and I am going to skip the basic explanation about it. I am going to use the RS-485 for the Modbus communication, and this is why today's video is kind of related to Modbus also. Today we will see how to use the RS-485 to TTL converter with our microcontroller. So what is this RS-485? To put it in simple words, just like RS-232, RS-485 is a protocol for serial communication. Compared to RS-232, it is faster, and can be used for data transmission over longer cable lengths and in noisy environments. Since the STM32 microcontrollers do not support the RS-485 communication, we will use the RS-485 to TTL converter. This converter uses the MAX485 chip and converts the TTL signals to RS-485, and vice versa. The converter has pins A, and B, here A is the non-inverting pin, and B is the inverting pin. Say for example, if the chip is powered with 5 volts, and we are sending 0 cross 9 5 via the UART. The MAX485 chip will amplify each bit, and this is how the output on the pins A, and B is going to look like. Notice that pin A is a non-inverting pin, so the signal on it is either 0, or plus 5 volts. On the other hand, pin B is an inverting pin, so the signal is either 0 or minus 5 volts. Now when this data is received by another module, it will interpret a 0 or 1 based on these differences. If the voltage difference is maximum between the pins, it's a 1, and if the difference is 0, the bit is also 0. I hope you understood how communication works, now let's talk about the connection. This is how the connection looks overall. I have two MCUs, which are connected via the two RS-485 to TTL converters. Let's dig deep into this. This picture shows the pinout of the module. On the right side we have the VCC, ground, pin A, and pin B. The pins A and B must be connected to the similar pins on the other module. You can see the connections between the corresponding A and B pins. I have already explained the purpose of these pins. On the left side, the pin RO, which stands for receiver output, must be connected to the RX pin of the MCU. The pin DI, driver input, is connected to the TX pin of the MCU. The pins RE and DE are connected together. RE stands for receiver enable, it enables the module to receive the data. But this is a low enable, that means we must pull the pin low, in order to enable the receiver. Similarly, DE, which is driver enable, enables the module to transmit the data. Since this is a high enable pin, we must pull it high in order to enable the transmit mode. So in order to transmit the data, the DE pin must be pulled high, and the RE pin also should be high. Similarly, to receive the data, the RE pin must be pulled low, and DE pin also should be low. This is why both the pins are tied together, so pulling either one of them will also pull another pin to the same state. This is the connection between the MCU and the module. The RO pin is connected to the PA10, the UART1 RX pin. The DI pin is connected to the PA9, the UART1 TX pin. And DE and RE are connected to the pin PA8, which we will set as the output later. The connection will remain similar with the other MCU also. Let's start the cube IDE and create a new project. I am using the STM32F103 controller. 
Give some name to the project and click finish. First of all we will enable the external crystal for the clock. The board has 8 MHz crystal on it, and we will run it at maximum 72 MHz. Then go to Sys, Debug, and enable Serial Wire. Set the time base source to Sysdic also. Now go to Connectivity, UART1, and enable the Asynchronous Mode. You can see here the pins PA10, and PA9 are enabled as the RX and TX pins. Let's keep the board rate at 115200. We have 8 bit word length, no parity, and 1 stop bit. Let's go to the interrupt tab, and enable the UART interrupt. We will use the interrupt to receive data from the module. This is it for the UART. Now we will set the pin PA8 as the output pin. This is where the RE and DE pins will be connected. I am naming this pin as the TX enable pin. Click save to generate the code. Let's first create the TX and RX buffers. Inside the main function, we will call the receive to idle function in interrupt mode. If you have been watching this channel, you know what this function does, for the rest of you guys, I will leave the link to the video in the description below. Basically during receiving, if the UART sees the line idle for some time, it triggers the interrupt. This interrupt eventually calls the RX event handler function. We will copy this event handle in our main file, and inside it we will restart the interrupt. Hold disables the interrupt after one call, so we need to enable it again. Now we need to send the data to the UART, so that it can be transferred via the module. Let's first create an index variable. We will continuously transfer the data in the while loop. First we will copy this string to the TX data array. This string will always have the updated value of the index variable. Then we will call the function send data to send this string to the UART. We will define this function later. And this process will repeat every one second. Now let's define the send data function. As I mentioned in the beginning, the RE and DE pins set the module as receiver or transmitter. Before sending the data, we need to set this module as a transmitter, and to do that we have to pull the DE pin as high. So here first of all we will set the TX enable pin as high. Then we will transmit the data via the UART. And again we will pull the pin low, so as to enable the receiver mode. Basically, the module is always in the receiver mode, because we don't know when the data might arrive. Just before we send the data, we put it in the transmitter mode, and after sending it goes back to the receiver mode again. We need to include some header files for the sprintf, and the string length functions. Alright everything is fine now. I am using F446RE as the second controller, which is connected to another module. The code used is exactly similar to the first one. Here is the send data function. In the first controller I am sending the string, which starts with F103. When the data is received by the second controller, it will just modify the first four bytes to F446 and send the same string back to the first controller. Since I want this second controller to only respond to the data sent by the first one, this is why the transmission program is written in the callback itself. There is nothing inside the while loop here. The code is already loaded into the F446, so we will just see the F103 debugger. Alright let's test this now. Both the controllers are connected to the same computer, 
So I am fixing the ST link to this configuration. Here I have put both the buffers in the live expression. Let's put a breakpoint at the send data function. Here you can see the data stored in the TX buffer, and now this data will be sent to the module. Let's put another breakpoint in the callback function. It didn't hit the breakpoint, but it's fine. Here you can see the data received. We have some garbage characters also, but this is because I didn't reset the F446, and it already had the data in the Rx buffer. Just ignore it for now. The data is exactly what we sent, but the 103 has been replaced with 446. We have hit the breakpoint this time, but the received data is the same. Let me try again. Seems like the received data is not updating. Maybe because of the breakpoints. Let's remove them, and run the code freely. All right now you can see the received data is exactly the same that we are sending, except for the first few bytes. Anyway you can clear the buffer in the second controller after sending the data, that way it will not send the extra characters. That's all for this video. In the next video, we will start with the Modbus, and obviously we will use this RS485 module with it. We will use STM32 as the master, and read some holding and input registers of the slave. The purpose of this video was just to give an idea about how this RS485 to TTL module actually works. I hope everything was clear. You can download the code from the link in the description. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.